welcome to Orion Today. I'm Joe Johnson, and uh, this week I'm joined by Jim Roback. How are you, Jim? Good. Fantastic, Joe. Thanks for stepping in and helping us out. No problem. Yeah, so, uh, gosh, things have been so busy here in Lake Orion with the arrival of spring-like weather. There's all kinds of activities happening in, in the area. Um, probably the, the, one of the biggest events this past weekend was Flower Fair in downtown Lake Orion. Uh, the flower and art fair. Um, traditionally, that has always been uh, put together by the DDA, mm-hmm. but a couple years ago, uh, the Orion Arts Center took it over and uses that as a fundraiser now. And uh, I think this is the second year that uh, the Arts Center has organized the flower and art fair. And so they closed down the streets of downtown Lake Orion and and uh, set up dozens and dozens of vendors. You can see the video playing right now that uh, lots of uh, like home improvement and uh, and garden uh, decorations and all sorts of stuff lined up on the the streets. And and obviously with the art center uh, being behind this, there's a really big emphasis on art this year. Uh, I talked to one of the spokespeople from the Art Center and I said, I noticed there's more of an emphasis on the art part of the fair than the flower part <laughs> right. of the fair. Yeah. And you said you noticed that yeah, uh, you made thing. it down yeah. there this right. past mm-hmm. weekend. Yeah, yeah. so they, the reason they said that there wasn't as much of an emphasis on the flower aspect is, is the staff shortage that a lot of businesses are facing today. They reached out to several uh, flower vendors in the area and they just couldn't spare mm-hmm. the staff to come down to Lake Orion and uh, set up shop. So um, also while the flower fair was going on, you see there that uh, the art center had their first art exhibit of the year. Um, there was a floral theme, I think it was called Orion in Bloom or something like that. Right. And uh, artists uh, in the area were able to submit art in all kinds of mediums from uh, pottery to, to portraits and all sorts of stuff, as long as it had uh, kept with the floral sure, theme. Sure. Um, so, uh, yeah, so there was a lot going on. Um, I know when I woke up Saturday morning, I heard thunder and oh, saw yeah. the storms, and I was like, oh, no, is this thing going to happen? Then but you, after a while, I, I went to downtown just to see how it was going, and mm-hmm. uh, they ended up with a beautiful day. What was your experience when you went down there Saturday? Well, it's kind of the same thing. You know, I was surprised, like you said, you know, the fact I was looking for more flowers and plants than that, and there was a, a scarcity of that, but there were so many vendors there, which was a fantastic turnout. I thought it was great. You know, there's so much to see, like, say, lawn ornaments to jewelry to you name it. There was something for everybody, you know, and uh, well attended, and people were having a good time, and like you say, the weather turned fantastic, and so it was a great, great day to go visit, you know, the flower show down there. So. Yeah, and it was over two days, yes. and on the second day, this was originally scheduled for Saturday, but they were concerned about the weather. Uh, so they postponed it to Sunday, but on Sunday they did a little bit of a historical tour of uh, some of the buildings. And Jimmy Johnson, who's with Where Living is a Vacation, joined forces with the Orion Historical Society. Mm-hmm. And they did a little mini tour of some of the buildings, uh, Ed's Broadway Gifts. Oh, they talked oh. a little bit about the history of that, uh, the Verwood Apartments, uh, Hanson's Running Shop, which used oh, to be good. Van Wagner's uh, mm-hmm. Pharmacy. And then uh, they went over to uh, Fork and Pint, which used to be a car dealership and a gas station. Is that right? Yeah. uh, That goes back a while then. Yeah, and there was one couple who was walking around with us on the tour. I shot video of it. And uh, they were lifelong Orion residents, so they were able to share some of their stories uh, too. So what what the, the Historical Society is doing is kind of partnering up with the DDA, and they're putting these permanent signs on these buildings that have a QR code and you could walk up to the building, oh. you find the sign, you bring up your phone, turn on the, the camera, right. you aim it at the QR code, and it'll take you to the DDA's website that gives you mm. more history on that location. That's, location. That oh, that's building. fabulous. We're using technology. Yeah, yeah. Love I it. guess Rochester has been doing something like that for years, and so now Orion's going to do it. And they want to add more uh, buildings, more locations. I think there's going to be two signs placed at uh, Children's Park, mm-hmm. and they want to put one over by AutoZone, which was the oh, location right. of the former train station. Um, so that's kind of neat. The, I, you know, one yeah. of the things I love most about Lake Orion, and specifically downtown Lake Orion, is the history. And, it is. It's uh, incredible. Yeah, yeah. It's and incredible. some of those buildings have been there forever. I mean, they've been there since the beginning. So now you can go from building to building and learn a little bit about the history of downtown Lake Orion. Well, I like that because, you know, I lived in 
Pennsylvania, I was near Gettysburg, you know, but you saw a little sign, you know, this building was in 1831 or something like that, a lot of history there, but doing that with a coat, I mean, that would be more interesting and more, you know, history that you can see, it'd be fabulous. Exactly. That's, that's really tech, using technology, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Great stuff. And speaking of downtown Lake Orion, um, one of the gems of downtown Lake Orion is Children's Park, and about a week or so ago, uh, they tore down the existing playscape uh, oh. in Children's Park and built a brand new playscape uh, that was funded by the DDA, the Downtown Development oh. Authority. Um, there was a grant and a group of volunteers came in and their goal was to do it all in one day. Oh, um, but the weather didn't cooperate that weekend, <laughs> so sure. uh, they, they kind of brought things to a close uh, midway through Saturday and then continued on Sunday. And then, um, and I think they were still working for an additional day or so mm -hmm. after that. Um, but yeah, they had a small army there constructing this playscape. I guess there's several areas. There's a large playscape, a smaller uh, area for younger children, mm -hmm. new swings and everything. And uh, while I was roaming around uh, the flower fair, I got to see the fully completed uh, play structure. And it was so cool to wow. see families and kids uh, utilizing the new playscape. Here it is oh, yeah. with uh, the new uh, surface that they've placed down there. Um, it was just beautiful. And, I, I couldn't help but wonder the, the people that were using it that they realized that it wasn't <laughs> there about a week ago. I, that's amazing. That they they constructed that very very quickly, and so now the children of Lake Orion and visiting families have this safe, oh, uh, fun this. play area in Children's Park to enjoy. I guess the the previous playscape had been there for a while yes, and there were some concerns and issues with it being safe mm -hmm. um, but now downtown Lake Orion has this beautiful playscape for I gotta go families. see it now because I didn't even realize I was downtown I missed it completely <laughs> so now you just uh, alerted me to what I got to see downtown now so yeah there every day practically I just totally missed it fast so fabulous. much going on downtown yes, in, for sure. uh, in the village and in Lake Orion yeah. and uh, speaking of things going on like I said this past weekend had been really really busy mm -hmm. uh, there was a really fun event uh, over at uh, Friendship Park. Um, Orion Township had come up with the idea of hosting a kickball tournament um, where they invited neighboring municipalities to take part in this kickball tournament. Uh, and the goal of the tournament was to raise money for uh, Miracle Field, that beautiful, oh, yeah. accessible field at Friendship Park. Um, and so each team, there were eight teams, they paid an entry fee to compete and half of the money that was raised was going to go toward uh, Miracle Field, and the winning team was going to win $10,000 for the charity of their, their choice. choice. Wow. Um, and there were some other prizes handed out. Um, so the tournament went on all day long. They utilized all of the ball fields at <laughs> Friendship Park. And then the championship game was played yeah. at Miracle Field, mm -hmm. and it had a pretty dramatic ending. I actually oh, got right? a little <laughs> emotional when uh, things wound up in the end, and you're going to mm -hmm. see that uh, at the end of this news story that I put together, looking back on the kickball tournament that took place mm -hmm. on Sunday. On the morning of Sunday, May 22nd, Friendship Park was bustling with activity during Orion Township's inaugural Kicking for a Cause kickball tournament. Eight teams took part in the tournament that acted as a fundraiser for Miracle Field and its nearly completed concession stand. The winning team would take home $10,000 to benefit the charity of their choice. We raised about $20,000 and half of that's gonna go to finish our concession stand. Uh, the other half, is gonna go to the winning team. Actually, the winning team gets 10,000 for whatever charity they choose. Second place team gets 2,500. And then we have a team spirit award for $1,000. So the team that is exhibiting the best team spirit out here will, will, won't go home empty handed. And then the big trophy is, is like the Stanley Cup. It's better than the Stanley Cup. And that team will get to keep it and all year long, keep that trophy, whatever they wanna do with it, but next year it'll be back. So it's gonna obviously stay here. The Orion Township team was joined by teams representing Macomb Township, Bloomfield Township, Oxford, Rochester Hills, Simcog, and Lake Orion Community Schools. Macomb County and St. Clair County formed one unified team. In round one, Orion Township hosted Oxford, 
While the game started out as a defensive battle, Orion exploded in the fourth inning, producing seven runs on its way to claiming a 9-2 victory. Former Detroit Lion Lomas Brown was in attendance to comment on the riveting action. I'm glad that they're out here. I hope they stretch before they started kicking the ball out. They got all the limbs limber and everything, but it's a great cause. It's for a great charity. So I'm glad that they're out here. And we got a lot of participants, so it's nice to see everybody participating and getting back involved, getting back outside and trying to get back to normal. Watching uh, what little bit do you, that you saw so far, do you think anyone has a chance of going pro? <laughs> Well, if they got a pro league, it might be a couple of prospects out here. You know, I see the pitchers. A couple of pitchers got some strong pitching arms that they pitch it down there. And I see some legs. So I see, I see some Cabrera-like legs out here. So, yeah, there's some talent out here. The tournament concluded with Bloomfield Township taking on Rochester Hills in the championship game. Bloomfield got on the scoreboard first to take a 1-0 lead in the second inning, but Rochester Hills scored two runs in the fourth to go out in front. At the top of the seventh and final inning, Rochester Hills was clinging to a 3-1 lead when soccer great Allison Vazanko sends one over the heads of the outfielders to drive in two runs and extend the lead to four. Bloomfield Township had one last chance at the bottom of the seventh, but after the final out, it was Rochester Hills claiming the championship with a 5-1 victory. Bloomfield Township received the second place prize of $2,500, and the Semcog team received a check for $1,000 for most spirit. Then, Orion Township Supervisor Chris Barnett presented the championship trophy and a check for $10,000 to his brother, Mayor Brian Barnett and the Rochester Hills team, who then made a stunning announcement. We have an important announcement. First of all, thank you all for, uh, for coming out tonight. And our captains have an announcement. It was awesome. Our team, Rochester Hills, we had 18, 20 people out here playing all day and probably three times that number of fans on a Sunday. So we have a great culture in Rochester Hills, and uh, this is going to be pretty fun to bring home and talk about this year. And then I got to admit, I got a little emotional there at the end when you presented the check back to Miracle Field. Was that the plan all along? No, uh, we. Uh, that wasn't really the plan all along, but they, they, I mean, when you see it, we, we, you know, watching the, the, the Miracle Leaguers play and uh, watching the fun they had, it was it was super cool. So we were happy to give it back. Uh, Chris, what's your reaction? And I'm giving you the check back. Um, it's the first nice thing my brother's ever done in <laughs> 44 years. And last, probably last too. Probably no, last. it's super cool. Um, it was a great day. Everybody had a blast. There was some competitiveness on, on show out here. We had a we had an ejection. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, we'll see if Macomb, uh, Macomb County's invited back. Really. Uh, it was a great day. And, uh, it was, I mean, so, I mean, we really were, I mean, this half the money's going for charity. And uh, it was just a, what, what a cool, nice, amazing gesture of the Rochester Hills team to help us get our concession stand open. That wasn't our intent, but very cool. Yeah, no, and I, I take it. all the bad things I've said about my brother back <laughs> today. Yeah. Just, just from today only. Named game MVP was Allison Vizanko, who scored a run, drove in two runs, and made a crucial catch in the bottom of the seventh to secure the win. I was actually brought in because my dad works for the city, but he is medically is not allowed to play. So they brought me in. So I think they call that a ringer. You knocked some runs in, you made a big catch. What was the day like for you? Uh, it was a great day. I mean, came in and had a lot of fun. I mean, just did what I could. How do you prepare for this? Uh, all the years of soccer. <laughs> oh, I see. That's great. And now here you are standing there with the check in your hand and the trophy. What's going through your head? Honestly, a lot of things right now, but I'm just happy we were able to bring it home. A ribbon cutting ceremony is planned for June 18th as the home plate concession stand celebrates its grand opening. It'll be staffed by Miracle League players, and proceeds from concession sales will benefit Miracle Field. From Friendship Park, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ON TV News.
So that was a lot of fun watching that kickball tournament happen. And what a great gesture from uh, Mayor Brian Barnett and his team captain and the team to donate the check back to Miracle Field. And we're looking forward to the big uh, grand opening of the concession stand in a couple of weeks when uh, they kick off the new mm -hmm. season at Miracle Field. So wow. a real gem that we have there at Friendship Park and just great uh, sportsmanship that we saw on Sunday and uh, just a super event. Uh, so now we are joined by our guest, uh, Prem Mukherjee. Mukherjee. Am I pronouncing yes. that correct? <laughs> yes, you are. Hi, That's you good. are the CEO of Arising Images. Tell me about Arising Images. What's that all about? Yeah, Arising Images is a fine art children's portrait company. And what that means is we try to go beyond taking just cute pictures. Our goal is we want to create a fine art heirloom portrait, something that's going to be around for generations, something that when the child walks home and they see this beautiful piece of artwork on their wall, it's going to fill them with joy and self-esteem that they're, they're valued enough to be the artwork on the wall. Wow. And we want this to be also a portrait where the parents will get to look at it many years to come and be reminded of the childhood innocence that their, their little one had when they were that age. Yeah, you're capturing a fleeting moment in time. Yeah. Are these portraits created using various art medium uh, or is it digitally it, created? It starts as, as photographic artwork mm -hmm. and then we have, uh, we have our, an artist that goes in and adds enhancements and embellishments to the pieces. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. What that's age group do you deal with in? Uh, it's primarily portrait? 2 to 12. 2 to 12? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. And so on top of that, uh, you are here today to promote uh, a grant program. Tell us about the grant program that you you're, uh, want to tell the folks yeah, about. Yeah, sure today. thing. So um, we've our business has been around for about 17 years. We've been incredibly blessed. We've been in the or Orient area for about seven to eight years or so. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just wanted to give back to the local community. So we have created a grant program where we're going to be letting um, any charitable organizations that do any work to make a difference in the lives of children because our business is children's portraits. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. So we want to help support organizations that are making a difference in the lives of children. How long have you been doing this grant program? This grant program is new. We've brand uh, new. it's okay. brand new. Yep, we've done other work in the past, but um, we've uh, the the work we've done in the past has primarily been international work, and now we wanted to bring it to southeastern Michigan. Great. So, how does a, a local organization apply for this grant? Yeah, we have a we have a link on our website, which is uh, I believe it's arisingimages.com/grant application. Mm -hmm. Um, and they can just go online. They can fill out the they fill out the form on there. We just need the documents for the 501c3 and the the um, information about their board, um, and then we will we'll have our board review those applications. And then from there, we're going to pick the um, we're going to pick the top five. And once we have the top five chosen, mm -hmm. then we'll bring them into our studio for an interview, and then decide who's going to get the grant money. So it says there are multiple grants ranging from 15000 to 30000 Can you Can you give us examples of some types of programs you might be looking for? I mean, I know this is the first year, so you don't have examples from the past, but what would you say is, you know, an ideal organization or service? You know, that's a, it's a really good question. Honestly, we are keeping it very open. So mm -hmm. it's, it's literally any organization that makes a difference for children. It can be, it can be handicapped children. It can be... Uh, foster kids, it can be, I mean, literally anything. If they make a difference for children, it's available. Wow, that's fantastic. You said you did it internationally, and then how did you come to select this area, and then the scope of your breadth of uh, your uh, donation now, which, how far do you go from this particular area, say, of, is it Oakland County and beyond Oakland County, or so, how far do you go? Yeah, that's a great question. We're saying 75 miles from Lake Orion. It's, okay. I mean, it's really all of southeastern Michigan. We don't oh. have any, you know, exact parameters. Is, is, is your, uh, the, the uh, Rising Images, is that headquartered in Lake Orion? Yep, yep, we're right on the pier road, about a mile and a half of north of where the palace used to be. All oh. right. And a deadline is about two months away? Something like that, yeah. We haven't, I think we put July 31st, 31st on there yeah. is when we're going to be cutting that off, um, and then we'll start reviewing applications from there. Okay. And so, just to kind of reiterate, so they apply for it. You have staff that'll go through the applications, and then you said there's in-person interviews. You want to elaborate on that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, absolutely. So um, what we're going to do is once we have, uh, once we read through the applications and we've identified who we feel that the, the top mm -hmm. probably four or five are, we'll invite them in. 
We'll meet them in person, we'll talk to them, learn a little bit more about the organization, about what they're doing and how long they've been doing it for, and just try to get a scope of uh, how they'll be able to use the money. And then from there, then we can make a decision of you know, who we want to give that grant money to. So these would be like you can say, for example, they, they can go to camp or you know, maybe some uh, um, well, Special Olympics, you know, they have would be something Absolutely. in those areas there within an age group there. Or is it pretty For well? sure. Yeah. OK. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's great. So how did this evolve? How, talk, talk about the conversation that you had to say, you know what, maybe we can give back to the community. Yeah, uh, it's, a good, it's a good question. Uh, it's, I think it's evolved over a long period of time. Um, my wife and I have been attending Kensington Church for a long time, mm -hmm. also over on Lapeer Road. Our office is a couple buildings north of there. We've been there for, gosh, 20 years. And through there, we've done a lot of missions work. And that's how we started with some more of the international programs um, and we again we've just kind of felt like hey we've been in Orion for a long time we focus on children so mm -hmm. let's this year let's just focus all of our money giving back to the local community and children in the local community Wow how long have you been doing the portrait services uh, 17 years 17 years yeah you've been doing that how did that come about go back to the origin <laughs> yeah, right. That's that. so I was I have an engineering degree from University of Michigan and I worked at General Motors for a long, long time, and uh, it just never was a fit. Um, <laughs> I think I had a lot of other creative juices that were flowing, and I had the opportunity to to leave. And um, when my wife, uh, my my wife and I just made the decision, hey, you know what? Let's give this a go. And so we started doing uh, weddings, and then family portraits, and high school senior portraits, oh, and nice. all sorts of stuff. And then it's mm -hmm. just over every, you know, over every few years, our business kind of evolved and changed and grew. And now we focus 100% on these children's fine art portraits. They're all mm -hmm. photographed in our studio. Um, we have roughly 20 employees now, Tw oh and uh, yeah, we're we're grateful to do what we wow. do. Wow, you know what's interesting? The the Orient Arts Center. They have these exhibits and they hand out cash prizes and have judges look at, you know, the different work that people submit. And over the years, they've accepted, you know, painted portraits and, and pottery and stuff like that. And I remember a few years ago I was there and I said, you know, if you ever had a show on digital enhancement of photographs, like converting photographs into art and they were like you know we never thought of that <laughs> so now that's like one of the accepted media that uh, mm. that the art center will include in some of their shows so talk about what you've witnessed in the evolution of of this digital fine art yeah uh, gosh it's oh my gosh it's evolved so much over the years mm -hmm. it, it just completely changes and um, I'm part of Professional Photographers of America and they do you know big wow. national conventions around the country and when you go to the conventions and you look at some of the artwork that's on display mm -hmm. the ones that are typically the award winners and the ones that get the most attention usually are significantly enhanced mm -hmm. um, wow. because the thing is that as an artist it gives you the opportunity to create something that otherwise would have been impossible mm -hmm. So yeah, it's pretty amazing watching what, what can be done. Are there tools that you prefer using when, when doing your work? Um, primarily Photoshop and, uh, and then also sometimes Corel Painter, um, mm -hmm. where you, you, know, you actually have a little drawing tablet and you can, you can draw <laughs> right on it with a yeah. pressure sensitive tablet. It's mm -hmm. amazing what you can do. And then you print these out on canvas? Print it on canvas and yeah. Uh, yeah, sometimes we've even gone beyond that and then painted over the top of those canvases. So oh, yeah, oh, there's oh a lot goodness. that can be done. Wow, that's, that's that's incredible yeah. watching the evolution oh, of that. It, it is, yeah. yeah. It's it's completely different than it was 20 years ago. Wow, and so here you are, 17 years <laughs> later. You, you made yeah. that big life-changing decision, and now you have your thriving business, and yeah. and you want to give back to the community. That's awesome. We're, we've been very blessed. Well, isn't that amazing, Joe? Because you know, I'm in a nice at Columbus, and we have the Toots Roll. It's amazing how the community is so generous in this community. It really it's is. unbelievable, and like you say now, you're doing the same thing now, you know, reaching out now for the applications here and to really supply things for children between that age, you know, between two and 16, whatever it is there. So 
commend you on that, Prem. Fantastic. Thank you. Great. Appreciate it. Great, great. Yeah, you're right. I mean, you know, I go out in the community and, and cover news stories mm -hmm. and stuff, and I'd say maybe half of the news stories I cover during the year are organizations giving back yeah, to the community. Yeah, unbelievable. There's fundraisers and yeah. stuff all the time in this community. It's it's a really amazing community. Are, are, are you lifelong residents of, of Lake Warren, or did you come here from another area? Uh, I grew up in Warren, okay. and then my wife was in Auburn Hills, and then we moved to Rochester Hills, and then to Orion, <laughs> so we've kind of bounced around, but mostly stayed in the area. Like what made you uh, adopt Orion as your home? What What is it about the community that you enjoy? Oh gosh, the people here are amazing. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that, that was great is when we moved here, we were able to get a property that had a little bit of land. Mm -hmm. We had neighbors before we even moved in. The neighbors were welcoming us and helping us wow. and it made a huge difference for us. And I, it was crazy how welcome we felt before we even lived here. It That's certainly cool. is a welcoming community. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable, yeah. Yeah. So where is your portrait studio again? Right on Lapeer Road. On Lapeer um, Road. Yep, directly off Lapeer. Um, we're across from the Palazzo de Bocci. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, about, yeah, right. yeah mm -hmm. about a mile, mile and a half north of where the palace was. Fantastic. So and you're on yeah. the west side of the street on the then? the west, yep. west side, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. And once again, if someone wants to reach out to you to uh, take advantage of this uh, grant application process, how do they go about doing that? Um, there's, we have, a, we have a phone number that they can call. I don't actually have that with me. I think we, we have that we can hopefully put on the screen. <laughs> and there's also a link for the application, um, arisingimages.com slash grant application. And uh, yeah, all the info will be on there. They'll, they'll have, uh, there, there's a form they can fill out, a little bit more information, along with a, a web link where they can upload the documents for the 501c3. Fantastic. And you're on Facebook and yep. social media and all that stuff. We're well, going to have to uh, come back and update us when the, the grants are handed out. Okay. Yeah. I'm curious to see how that ends Absolutely. up going. Absolutely. That's fantastic. Great. Well, continue the great work in the community. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Brandon. I appreciate you guys. Good and introduction. Thanks for joining mm -hmm. us, and um, we're going to take you to uh, a music video. We enjoy having music <laughs> on this show, and uh, we're trying to figure out what what music video can we roll into the show this week. And I I looked into the schedule over at Twenty Front Street, which is a oh, fantastic yeah. venue we have in downtown Lake Orion, and I saw that a performer named Sarah Potenza is going to be performing this Friday at Twenty Front Street. She's oh. from Nashville. And I went on to YouTube to look up some of the music that, uh, that find out what kind mm -hmm. of music they uh, perform, her and her group. And it turns out it's mostly blues. And I stumbled onto this music video that just blew my oh. mind. I just thought it was amazing. Uh, so I reached out to Sarah through Facebook and I said, you know, we have this program that we do here at Owen TV. Um, can we roll in uh, the video mm -hmm. to help promote your appearance at 20 Front Street this week? And she replied back and said, that would be fantastic. Oh. So here's an introduction to Sarah Potenza, who's going to be performing at 20 Front Street this Friday.
let the place fill in by the way the waitress looks you can tell the crowd is thing there's a couple in the front row they seem to know all your song they don't know how much it means just to watch them sing along so keep on Yeah, I can bring one and show you what it hey, is. We are. Oh, okay, we're on. <laughs> okay. How talented is Sarah Potenza, and what a great venue we have in 20 Front Street. Uh, so she'll be there this Friday. Have you seen any shows at 20 Front Street? I yet? haven't. I mean to go there. It's supposed to be fabulous, I understand. Oh, such a, a fantastic yes. venue. I've seen a couple of shows there. We've recorded a couple of shows there. I even produced a stand-up comedy show there a few <laughs> years ago. Um, but it's really a, a, a great gem in the community. And so take a look. Uh, go to uh, 20frontstreet.com and look at their upcoming event schedule and see if there's any upcoming performers like Sarah that mm -hmm. you might want to check out. Uh, really cool venue. Um, another cool thing that happened this past weekend is Dino Stroll uh, oh, returned right, to yeah. Canterbury Village. Uh, it's just about the one year anniversary of when Dino Stroll first kicked <laughs> off at Canterbury Village. Mm -hmm. um, and what I didn't realize initially until I talked to Keith Aldrich, the owner over there, is that Keith Aldrich and, and Canterbury Vill Village basically own these dinosaurs. Oh, and so when they kicked off the dino stroll at Canterbury Village last year, uh, when it was done here, it started touring the country. Mm. And so these dinosaurs get packed up and shipped <laughs> all over the country. And now it's come full circle and have returned here to Canterbury Village in Lake Orion. Uh, so the first weekend was this past weekend, um, but now they're gonna be coming back this weekend uh, so you have one more chance Ooh. to bring the family out and, and catch these amazing animatronic dinosaurs. Um, if you bring a little one to the dino stroll, um, they will absolutely be convinced that these are living, breathing <laughs> creatures. Uh, they move, they blink, yeah. they make noises. 
uh, the Dilophosauruses will spray you with their venom. <laughs> um, and a, a new feature that they've added this year is the, uh, the dr dragon den, I think they call it, hmm. um, where they have these animatronic dragons on display now. Um, so if you missed it this past weekend, try to get out there this upcoming weekend and check out these amazing Boy. animatronic di uh, dinosaurs at uh, Canterbury Village. It's I didn't even know they were amazing. animated. I didn't realize. I thought they were just, you know, stand-up, you know, balloon-type figures. Yeah, no, no they, they roar wow. and move and uh, little kids great. are just in awe when they <laughs> see these things. I was in awe. I, I <laughs> felt like a 10-year-old kid roaming the grounds there. So there's something to do with the little ones. and then. This upcoming weekend, um, of course, is Memorial Day weekend, mm -hmm. and I know a lot of people just look forward to Memorial Day weekend as a three-day uh, holiday, you know, where you can barbecue with the family and stuff. But uh, you also want to remember that it's it's Memorial Day is to honor those who've lost their lives uh, serving this country and defending this country, and so Lake Orion uh, does such a great job of honoring its uh, veterans. And um, the memorial, the Veterans Memorial that's on M24, I think is one of the it, best in the it nation. It is, it truly is. Um, I've watched its evolution over the last 25 years or so from when they took ownership of the parcel of land on M24 mm -hmm. to the very first uh, monuments that they've added. And then over the course of the years, they keep adding to it. Uh, one of the more recent additions was the uh, the dog monument to honor oh. the dogs that uh, serve the military. Yeah. Um, and so it's just a really beautiful monument. And so come Memorial Day, there are all sorts of activities uh, planned for Monday. Um, Memorial Day is rarely a day off for me because mm -hmm. I'm usually out there shooting video of the events uh, that are happening uh, in Lake Orion. Uh, and here's a, a short video to sort of uh, let you know what's going to be happening on Monday, this Memorial Day weekend here in Lake Orion. As we pause to honor those who fought and died for our freedoms, Lake Orion has a full day of events planned on Memorial Day. The day begins with the Orion Veterans Memorial 5K at 9 a.m. Run or walk the 5K or 5-mile course that begins and ends on Anderson Street near the Orion Arts Center. Registration fees go toward the maintenance and upkeep of the Orion Veterans Memorial. There is also a small ceremony taking place at East Lawn Cemetery on Orion Road beginning at 9 a.m., followed by a wreath ceremony in Children's Park at 10 a.m. to honor those who lost their lives at sea. Then at 11 a.m., the Memorial Day Parade returns to downtown Lake Orion. Participants will gather at Blant Sims Elementary, then make their way down Flint Street toward Broadway Street then turn north toward the Eamon Center where the parade will come to an end. And finally, the day will conclude with a ceremony at the beautiful Orion Veterans Memorial on M24 at 1.30 p.m. Speeches, recognitions, and musical performances will pay tribute to those who fought and died for our country while serving in all branches of the military. Join your Lake Orion neighbors on Memorial Day for these special events on Monday, May 30th. So a full slate of events are planned mm -hmm. uh, for Memorial Day. Uh, Jim, how do you spend Memorial Day weekend? What are your plans? I tend to go over to the Memorial. They do a, a super job, you know, and meet some of the veterans there, and they do a beautiful presentations out there, and I enjoy going there. And they have, the, I guess the fire department has that flag that's hosted up with about 50 feet up there and one oh, of those yeah. little ladders there and everything else. And generally that, and they'll probably spend some time with the family, maybe have a barbecue out there somewhere in Lake Orion where my sure. daughter lives. So, yeah, it's a good day to remember our fallen, that's for sure. Yeah, and uh, like I said, that whole memorial is great, and, and I'm really happy that the parade is returning. Uh, yes. They haven't, uh, due to COVID and everything, uh, they haven't had a parade, I think, over the last two years. And so as Memorial Day was getting closer, I was on the phone calling people, you know, when is the parade going <laughs> to return to Lake Orion? And, you know, it's a short parade. It's, it's nothing like our Christmas parade, right. but I think it's an important part of Memorial Day events to have that parade going through downtown Lake Orion. Yeah. 
Because we saw the Oxford one, I didn't see the, you know, the Lake Orion. They said it was a visual one. I'm trying to say, what's the visual, you know? But I'm glad you clarified that today, you know, that there is actually going to be a parade. So it's going to be great to go down there. What time was that at? Is that like at noon approximately? So, yeah. So the, the 5K run is, is at 9 a.m. Yeah. And then there's a, a wreath ceremony in Children's Park at 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. The parade, I believe, is at 11 a.m. Oh, 11. Okay. And then the ceremony at the memorial is uh, 1 or one one thirty. 30, something yeah. like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, full day of events. So if you can find the time to get out there and honor our veterans, uh, that yeah, would be great. Great thing to do, yes, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, so much uh, going on here in, in Lake Orion. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot going on with sports uh, over <laughs> at the high school. There's so <laughs> many uh, sports events going on right now. And, and Joey Tysick is Owen TV's uh, sports reporter, and he's prepared... Uh, this piece for you to give you an update of what's happening at, with Dragon Sports. Mm -hmm. Take it away, Joey. The girls' varsity soccer team has also been having a solid season for being moved up to the always difficult red division. The Dragons went on a three-game win streak since our previous episode, and on May 12th, they faced off against Oxford and won 2-1 to one after scoring no goals in the first half. Madeline Smith and number 20 for Lake Orion each scored in the game, helping beat crosstown rival Oxford. May 17th was senior night, and the Dragons faced off against Birmingham Groves. Anne-Marie Fosman got the Dragons on the board first with a nice little breakaway goal 15 minutes into the game. Then, with a minute and a half left in the first half, Whitney Acker made a great spin move to set up Addison Verlinden for the redirect tap-in goal to put the Dragons up 2-0. Again, this was senior night, so Ashley Cole, Megan Witt, Bridget Finnerin, Erica Fisher, Madeline Smith, Anne-Marie Fosman, Sarah Honesheed, and Mia Stewart were all honored at halftime of the game. Groves did get on the board with 15 minutes into the second half, but the Dragons responded with a beautiful free kick from Brooke Blackstock that resulted in another goal from Anne-Marie Fosman. The Dragons would end the game with a 3-1 victory. The Lady Dragons would then go on to face West Bloomfield and beat them 4-0 on May 18th at LOHS. The Dragons now sit at 9-7-3, as they are beginning to look towards those playoffs. They did recently get their district draw and will play the winner of Flushing or Lapeer as Lake Orion received a first round bye. The good news for Lake Orion is that they will have home field advantage for districts. Good luck, ladies. The boys varsity lacrosse team has also been hard at work lately as their season winds down and they approach their district run as well. The Dragons have looked really tough as of late and have been able to make a few comebacks in close games. On May 10th, they beat De La Salle Collegiate at home 10-6 as a part of their sixth straight home game. On May 12th, Macomb, Dakota came to town to face Lake Orion, and this would be a back-and-forth match all night long. Lake Orion was able to get on the attack early as they got goals from Giorgio Ruffini and Cross Papadellis in the first two minutes of the game. The Dragons got their third goal of the first quarter from Brady Drury. The Dragons' offense came to play in this one. Kyler Carson got the fourth goal from the Dragons early into the second quarter as they went up 4-0. Sam Haynes and Kyler Carson again would each get another goal in increasing their lead to six until finally Dakota was able to find a goal of their own. Papadellis would get his second goal of the night towards the end of the first half, giving the Dragons their seventh goal. Braden Brown would finish off the half, getting the Dragons their eighth goal and ending the half with the 8-1 lead over Dakota. This was also senior night for the boys where Tyler Baker, Cross Papadellis, Chase Whitaker, Owen Boyd, Brady Drury, Giorgio Ruffini, Kyler Carson, Reese Meech, CJ and Trevor Witt, Noah Perillo, Braden Brown, Ethan Strand, and Jackson Bellinger were all honored at halftime of the game. In the second half, Dakota started to heat up a little as they scored two straight goals until Kyler Carson stopped the run and scored his fourth goal of the night, giving the Dragons a 9-3 lead. This would also be the score at the end of the third as both teams stepped up defensively. Heading into the fourth, it looked like it was going to be pretty tough for Dakota to make the comeback, but they definitely gave it their all. They were able to come out fast and score within the first minute of the fourth, decreasing the margin to five. But Tyler Baker of the Dragons responded quickly to go back up by six. Braden Brown would get the Dragons their 11th goal, and then the real clincher was Cross Papadellis' hat trick, giving the Dragons the 12-4 lead with seven minutes remaining. Brady Drury would give Lake Orion their 13th goal, and the game would end with a Dragons win on Tyler Baker's final goal with five seconds left, giving the Dragons the 14-6 victory. 
On May 16th, the Dragons would face another tough opponent in Brother Rice, but once again, this would be a home game for the Dragons. Lake Orion would get on the board first in this one off of a Luke Gannon goal. Brother Rice would then respond with two goals of their own to end the first quarter with a 2-1 lead over Lake Orion. Quickly in the second quarter though, the Dragons would tie the game from a nice goal from Tyler Baker. Then, just a minute later, Kyler Carson would retake the lead for the Dragons off a Tyler Baker assist. The Dragons would continue the strong second quarter with goals from Cross Papadellis, Sam Haynes, Brady Drury, Tyler Baker, and Braden Brown to end the first half for the Dragons with the 8-4 lead over Brother Rice. The game slowed down a bit in the second half, but the Warriors stuck around in the game. They were able to get a few goals in the third to bring them within two of the Dragons as Theo Lane for his sixth goal out of the Warriors' seventh. The Dragons' lead was now down to one. But as usual, the Dragons responded, and scored two quick goals, one from Sam Haynes and the other from Kyler Carson. The Dragons held a three goal lead into the fourth, but once again, the Warriors scored within the first minute of the quarter and then again just a couple of minutes later. They were back down by one with still nine minutes to play. And then 30 seconds later, the Warriors tied it up at 10 apiece. The Dragons needed to lock in defensively to keep the Warriors from using this momentum. Brady Drury did exactly that, by scoring and putting the Dragons back up by one. After the scoring flurry early on in the fourth quarter, the game stayed at 11-10 for a bit until Kyler Carson put the nail in the coffin for the Dragons and his hat trick. To put the final goal in of the game, the Dragons would win 12-10. On May 19th, the pre-regional game would be at Lake Orion High School against Utica Eisenhower, where the Dragons just took care of business. They won the game 18-0. This Dragon team is poised to make a run in the regional tournament, and they will now play Romeo tomorrow in the regional semifinal. For past episodes of the Sports Update, head on over to orientontv.org and click the ONTV On Demand link. There you will find all of ONTV's community programming, news, sports, concerts, and government meetings. You can also watch us on Roku, Amazon Fire, and Apple TV, all in HD. Just add the Cablecast channel to your lineup to enjoy local programming at its best. For even more Lake Orion sports, check out our YouTube channel for our full game coverage. Visit YouTube.com and search for Orion Neighborhood Television. Also make sure to catch all of our replays Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 7 p.m. along with Saturdays at 1 p.m. We'll see you next time. So yeah, lots of going on uh, Dragon Sports. Thanks, Joey, for that report. and. It's great to see our uh, Dragon teams just thriving and succeeding out there. So, um, so yeah, something, uh, something else recently that happened about a week or so ago was uh, the Motor City Comic Con return to Novi, Michigan at the Suburban Collection Showplace out there. And for me, that's like a holiday. Oh. I mean, I count down the days <laughs> to Motor City Comic Con. Uh, over the past two years, they had to cancel it because of the COVID pandemic. Uh, they did do sort of a smaller version in the fall with COVID protocols in place. I didn't go to that one, but it finally returned uh, to Michigan in, in May, and it was a blast. It was so much fun. Um, I know the last time that they had an event, there was like 70,000 attendees. Um, there are dozens and dozens of vendors selling comics yeah. and toys and collectibles and all sorts of stuff. And uh, you, you mentioned that uh, people like to dress up <laughs> yeah. as their favorite uh, characters. They call it cosplaying, mm -hmm. and you don't know what you're going to see. There's some uh, pretty amazing costumes, costumes out yeah. there. So you said you're... Yeah, my grandson went down, and he was Spider-Man, and then he had... One of his artist friends from uh, College Creative Studies, and he they went together, and he was a sidekick of Spider. I guess I don't know if it was a man or lady, but some kind of a name. I don't remember. I wish I'd have remembered it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've been there a couple of times, and you see all like you say the costumes from Darth <laughs> Vader to everything. And these people just walk around. It's it just blows your mind. It's unbelievable. Yeah, they really, really get into. They get it, into it absolutely. One of the aspects I love most about uh, Comic Con is meeting celebrities. Hmm. Uh, usually months in advance of the event, they start to announce their celebrities that are going to show up, and that's become a huge part of Comic-Con. 
Uh, some of the names that I was looking forward to meeting, uh, one was Alicia Silverstone. I don't mm. know if you remember Alicia Silverstone. She was in a movie called Clueless uh, oh, that right, came yeah. out in uh -huh. the 90s, and that made her a superstar. And uh, this, and she was also in a movie that was a little more controversial. She, was, <laughs> she played Batgirl in the Batman and Robin uh -huh. movie that starred George Clooney which some people call one of the worst movies ever made. <laughs> um, but I got to meet her and uh -huh. got her signature, and she was really sweet and nice. Did you have to pay for it? I did. Oh, I did. Okay. I stood in line <laughs> to pay for her signature. Um, over the years, um, you know, years ago, like I remember going to Autorama and meeting Adam West, who played Batman oh, yeah. on the TV show. And I remember there was like no line. I went up to him. I was able to chat with him for a little bit. And then I had him sign an 8 by 10 for like, twenty dollars or uh -huh. something today like William Shatner was at the Motor City Comic Con he charges a hundred and twenty dollars oh, per autograph. autograph and people will bring in merchandise and stuff and have him sign, sign. multiple pieces uh, I saw that happen when I was in LA I went to an event called the Hollywood show in LA mm -hmm. and one of the celebrities appearing there is Christopher Lloyd oh, who was yeah. in the back to the Fu future movies and a bunch of other things and the very first guy that was in line, because I was like 17th in line, uh -huh. and the line wasn't moving. And I'm like, why is the line not moving? And they said, well, the very first guy in line brought 20 pieces for Christopher <laughs> Lloyd to sign <laughs> at 120 bucks a pop. A pop. So think about that. 20 uh -huh. items at 120 bucks a, a pop. Grand. That was a couple of grand. Shatner's getting the same kind of numbers. So he was at the Motor City Comic Con. Um, I'm conservatively guesstimating that names like Shatner and Christopher Lloyd, they have to pull down at least $100,000 over an the event weekend. like this? Yeah, what a Easily. Imagine. I mean, to get $100,000, that's a thousand signatures. And there's seventy thousand people, people at this event, so I'm th I'm thinking a hundred thousand is on the low, low end. side, yeah. But Jim, if you can get a couple of successful movies or TV shows under your belt, that's <laughs> yeah. your retirement, right yeah, there. Right. <laughs> I'm happily retired now, so I'm in good shape. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Not me. I got to do a movie soon, <laughs> okay. so I can live off my autograph. There you but, go. There you go. But I really do enjoy it. Um, they had actors there, and they had some wrestlers mm -hmm. there, and and uh, and comic book creators oh, and yeah. stuff like that. Um, I'm not a huge wrestling guy. Tessa in our control room, she's a big uh, <laughs> Is wrestling that right? fan. Um, and we went around with a video camera. You know, we mm -hmm. interviewed some of the people there. And I got to say that some of these wrestlers that we talked to were the nicest people. They were so pleasant and just happy to be there meeting their fans and mm -hmm. things like that. So it's, it's great when you get to meet your heroes in person and oh, they turn sure. out to be as nice as you hoped uh, mm -hmm. they were going to be. Um, so that's something I look forward to all the time. And as a matter of fact, the Comic-Con announced um, that they're going to be returning again in the fall. Oh. So last fall they did a fall show for the first time. I guess it was so successful mm -hmm. that it looks like they might be doing it like twice a year now, annually. once in the wow. spring and once in the fall. So I'm looking forward to see who they're going to be announcing as mm -hmm. their guests, guests uh, yeah. in the fall. But I will be there and I will bring a, a camera. and. Um, the video that I put together on the most recent Comic-Con you can find on YouTube. I did a little news story. One of the highlights of the news story was um, on Friday morning, I took the day off Friday to go to <laughs> no, Comic-Con. No, you didn't do that. And uh, Friday morning, uh, they had a reunion of actors who appeared in the Christopher Reeve Superman movies. Oh, no kidding. Now, as you may know, oh. Christopher Reeve suffered a, a, yeah. a paralyzing like accident uh, as an equestrian. And he, him and his wife started a foundation uh, to help, you know, yeah. fix, uh, you know, spinal damage and stuff like that. So they had this event at, at Comic-Con to raise funds for his foundation. Mm -hmm. And it was really cool um, meeting some of the actors who were in these movies. Uh, Mark McClure, who played Jimmy Olsen in the movies, we did a little interview with him. Uh, Mariel Hemingway, um, who is the granddaughter of Ernest Hemingway. Oh, no kidding. Uh, she was there. She was very, very sweet. And mm -hmm. uh, so it was really neat uh, talking to these people. So look for the video on YouTube if you want to see a recap of the most recent uh, Motor City Comic Con. And, I'm and then we have something going on here at the Orient Center here, right? Yeah, so if you enjoy that sort of thing, on June 4th, Orient Township uh, is having not only their outdoor community garage sale, mm -hmm. which is awesome, so many vendors all in the parking lot here at the Orient Center, 
While that's going on outdoors, indoors is the uh, Comic and Toy yeah. Expo and Antique Show. Oh, Antique also. So oh. one-stop shopping if you come to the Orient Center between 9 and 3, I believe. Uh, outdoors will be the, uh, the community garage sale, but be sure to stop inside, inside. the Orient Center for comics, toys, antiques, uh, all sorts of stuff. Uh, I used to take part in those shows. I collect uh, Hot Wheels oh, Hot and Wheels, die yeah, cast and everything. That. Uh, but the last show that I took part in, uh, one of the other vendors approached me and bought my entire inventory. You're kidding. I sold everything. Oh. <laughs> so I don't have anything to sell anymore. So uh, until I rebuild my, my inventory, I'm just going to be a, a shopper at this event. And mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to it. Do you, do you ever make it out to the, uh, to the, the community garage? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I always look for something, you know, and you always find something unique. And I think you mentioned to me one time here recently, there was a couple of things that uh, I saw there and I didn't buy it. And you said your first impulse should say, if you'd like it, buy it. Yeah, that's because the one if, thing if you, you should come do, back, it's, it's going to be gone. gone. Exactly. That happens all yep, the time. It happens every time. Yeah, so yeah. So do it. It's a great thing. Good, good venue. So that's going to be coming up, and there's other events coming up, and uh, we'll give you an idea of what you can write in your calendar over the next couple of weeks on uh, this week's Quick Hits. Uh, Becky, what's happening in the community uh, the next few weeks? Don't wait to vaccinate. Every Tuesday now through June, the Oakland County Pet Adoption Center will be offering free rabies vaccines with the purchase of a dog license. Stop by the center between 9.30 and 11 on any Tuesday. No appointment is needed. The center is located at 1200 North Telegraph Road, Building 42E in Pontiac. Spring is here at the Wind Nature Center. The center will be hosting a Transformation Station Water Studies program this Saturday from 10.30 to noon. Come join the action and witness all the things in nature becoming more active and transforming. This program is suitable for children 6 and up. The cost is $5 per person and pre-registration is required by calling 248-858-0916. Calling all runners and walkers, the Veterans Memorial Day run will take place on Monday, May 30th in downtown Lake Orion. For more information and registration, visit orionveteransmemorial.com. Registration is now open for the Young Life of Lake Orion 5K Donut Dash. The race will take place on June 4th and begin and end at Yates Cider Mill at Canterbury Village. For more information and registration, visit lakeorion.younglife.org. Don't miss the Memorial Day ceremony at the Orion Veterans Memorial. The ceremony will take place at 1 o'clock. Please come and honor the veterans who gave all their tomorrows for our todays. Well, let's take a look at this week's weather. Tomorrow's forecast is calling for mostly cloudy skies with a high of 71 and low of 64. Thunderstorms on Thursday with a high of 74 and low of 58. Showers on Friday with a high of 64 and low of 51. Evening showers on Saturday with a high of 71 and low of 55. Partly cloudy on Sunday with a high of 79 and low of 65. And partly cloudy again on our holiday Monday with a high of 85 and low of 66. Well, that's it for this week's ON TV Quick It. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. So not the best weather this weekend, <laughs> but it looks like at least on Memorial Day, uh, we're hopefully going to get some nice mm -hmm. weather for the ceremony. Uh, if it's going to be raining this weekend, I might uh, go check out a movie. Any movies coming out that you're interested in? I'm not a movie. I usually fall asleep. I mean, I like <laughs> like I think the last one I saw was The Lincoln, you know. When, oh, that was a while yeah, ago. That was a while. Yeah, it was a couple of years yeah, ago. Yeah. No, I, I, I fall asleep, so I just... Don't go. My I've been go. Uh, hearing good things about the new Top Gun movie. Tom oh, I Cruise. would see that one. I guess, I don't know if it's some sort of record or something, but it's, I think it's been like 35 years it's since like the that. first Top Gun that we're finally getting a sequel uh, <laughs> to Top Gun. And so far, the critics have been kind. Uh, I heard that they showed the film at the uh, the Cannes Festival and uh -huh. and uh, got a standing ovation. So no wow. uh, if you want to relive the uh, the glory days of the '80s, uh, I might be in the theater this weekend to watch Tom Cruise. I could go for that. Do, doing it again. Yeah, right. I could go for that. You got that beautiful girl there. You know, was, was, uh, yeah, yeah, that was yeah. nice. <laughs> I yeah. don't know if she'll be there or not, but uh, I I don't know. I don't. Okay, I think we'll Val Kilmer is supposed to be in the movie. Who oh, um, he's had a tough go of it. He had throat surgery right? uh, over the past few years. I got to meet him a few years ago at the Motor City Comic Con. Super nice guy. Oh, got to be. Um, but apparently he makes an appearance in the movie and it's a, an emotional one. And, mm -hmm. and then another thing to look forward to in a few days is the Obi-Wan series oh, on Disney. People <laughs> have been counting down the days 
to Obi-Wan and it's going to talk about what Obi-Wan was doing uh, prior to the, the original Star Wars movie, keeping an eye on Luke Skywalker on Tatooine and all that stuff. So uh, it's really exciting. I know I'm looking forward to it and uh, I'm always looking for something new and fun to watch and binge watch. So. Is that where they actually line up, you know, days ahead of time to go see the movies like I see in California? They line up for these movies? You, you really don't have to line up anymore because no? what I love is like at the Imagine Theater, you can go on your phone, you can pick your seats, you oh, buy them right? ahead of time, oh, you, you show up at the last minute, get your popcorn and pop, and your seat is really? there waiting for you. And you got that's these nice recliners. So <laughs> that's what I think I might be doing on yeah. a rainy Saturday uh, this weekend. So mm -hmm. Jim, that about does it for this episode of Orient Today. Thanks for joining us. It was no great problem. having you great. sitting yeah. next to me. And we will see you next time on our uh, in two weeks on our next live edition of Orient Today. We'll see you. Good night.